Watchmen of Yahuwah presents the foundation of Yahuwah's truth. Tahalim 11.3 If the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? The scriptures are entirely true, from Barashit to Hazum. This truth gives them the ability to be applied to every aspect of our lives. It is the historical record of true events written down by Kadash men who were inspired by the Ruh HaKadash. 2nd Kapah 116 For we have not followed cunningly devised fables when we made known to you the power and coming of our master Yahushua HaMashiach, but were eyewitnesses of his majesty. The Torah of Yahweh Elohim is the foundation of the entire Bible from the Tanakh to the Berit Hadashah. It is by his every word that mankind shall live. Dabarim 8.3 And he humbled you, and suffered you to hunger, and fed you with manna, which you knew not, neither did your fathers know, that he might make you know that man does not live by bread only, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of Yahweh does man live. Matthew 4.4 4. But Yahushua answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of Elohim. See also, Yahaz Call, 2011, Lucas 4.4 4. The Torah of Yahweh Elohim is eternal, and because he does not change, it cannot by any means be changed, abolished, or broken. It cannot be added to nor taken away from. Doing so results in bondage and curses. Tahalim 119.89 Lamad Forever, O Yahweh, your word is settled in heaven. Matit Yahu 24.35 Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will by no means pass away. See also Bemedabar. 23.19 Tahalim 119.144 Yeshayahu 40 and 8 Malachi 3 6 through 7 First Kapa 1.25 Gabarim 4.2 Hazum 22.19 The name of the Father is Yahuwah and the name of the Son is Yahusha. These names were given to us from messengers from heaven by Yah's own mouth and cannot be translated, replaced, or substituted with titles. Shemut 315 And Elohim said moreover unto Masha Thus shall you say unto the children of Yasharal Yahweh Elohim of your fathers The Elohim of Abraham The Elohim of Yaktasak And the Elohim of Yaakov Have sent me unto you This is my name forever And this is my memorial unto all generations Yahuhanan 543 I am come in my father's name, and you receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him you will receive. See also Yoram Yahu 2327, Mishalai 30 and 4, Matit Yahu 121, Maashim 412, Maashim 26, 14 through 15. Yahusha HaMashiach, the son of Elohim, is Yahweh Elohim. He is the Torah made flesh and did not come to destroy, abolish, nor change the Torah of Elohim Ha'ab, but fulfilled sacrificial blood ordinances that no animal nor man could fulfill. These were the ordinances that were hung on the tree of his execution for all mankind. Why would he do away with his own instructions written by his very own finger and given to Masha not once but twice? Yahshayahu 42 Yahweh shall go forth as a mighty man. He shall stir up jealousy like a man of war. He shall cry, yea, roar. He shall prevail against his enemies. Yahweh is well pleased for his righteousness sake. He will magnify the law and make it honorable. Matit Yahu 5, 17 through 20. Think not that I have come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. 
Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I say unto you, that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, ye shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. Many believe that being called least in the kingdom of Yahweh by breaking his laws and teaching others to do so means that one doing so will still be in his kingdom. They are dangerously mistaken. Matik Yahweh 13 As therefore the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so shall it be in the end of this world. The son of Adam shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend, and them which do iniquity, and shall cast them into a furnace of fire, and there shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth, and then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father, who has ears to hear, let him hear. See also Abarim 9, 11 through 28, Hazum chapter 5. Colossians 2, 11 through 13. The Shabbat is the called out day of Yahweh Elohim for all mankind. It was even commanded that animals that were used as beasts of burdens must rest. It is so important that it is the first commandment given by him to remember and to guard. Shamut 20, 8 through 11. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it Kadash. Six days shall you labor and do all your work. But the seventh day is the Shabbat of Yahweh your Elohim. In it you shall not do any work, you, nor your son, nor your daughter, your manservant, nor your maidservant, nor your cattle, nor your stranger that is within your gates. For in six days Yahweh made Shabaim and Haaretz, Hayam, and all that is in them, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore Yahweh Baruch the Sabbath day and hallowed it. According to scripture, the Shabbat begins at evening on the seventh day of the week and ends at evening the next day. Yahweh told us, his people Yasharal, that it would be a sign between us and him. Yahusha said that he himself is the master of the Shabbat. Therefore, it cannot be changed, moved, nor be substituted for any other day of the week. It is a gift from Abba Yahweh to his creation for us to rest from all our work. Barashit 2, 3, and Elohim Baruch the seventh day and sanctified it because that in it he had rested from all his work which Elohim created and made. Shamut 31, 13, speak you also unto the children of Yasharal saying, verily my Sabbaths you shall keep for it is a sign between me and you throughout your generations that ye may know that I am Yahweh that does sanctify you. The Shabbat was even kept after Hamashiach's death, burial, and resurrection by his followers. Ma'ashim 13 But when they departed from Perga, they came to Antioch in Pisidia, and went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day, and sat down. And after the reading of the law and the prophets, the ruler of the synagogue sent to them, saying, Men and brethren, if you have any word of exhortation for the people, say on and when the Yahudim were gone out of the synagogue, the Gentiles besought that these words might be preached to them the next Sabbath. Now when the congregation was broken up, many of the Yahudim and religious proselytes followed Paul and Barnabas, who, speaking to them, persuaded them to continue in the favor of Elohim. And the next Sabbath day came almost the whole city together to hear the word of Yahweh. See also Uyakara 19.30. Yashayahu 58, 13 through 14, Marcus 2, 27 through 28, Ma'ashim 17, 1 through 4, Ma'ashim 18, 1 through 4. Yahweh Elohim is concerned with every aspect of our lives, even what we eat. Therefore, he established dietary instructions to keep us healthy. 
He has told us what is clean and unclean, separated and profane, to make it easy for us to obey his Torah. Anything that is commanded for us not to eat is never considered to be food in the scriptures. Only the things that are commanded to eat are considered food to the people in the Kadash writings. And yes, even to Emissary Shaul, a.k.a. Apostle Paul. Barashit 1 And Yah said, Behold, I have given you every herb-bearing seed which is upon the face of all Haaretz and every tree in the which is the pari of a tree yielding seed, to you it shall be for food. And to every beast of Haaretz, and to every fowl of the air, and to everything that creepeth upon Haaretz, wherein there is life, I have given every green herb for food, and it was so. Animal sacrifice was introduced to man after the fall of Adam because Yahweh used the skins of animals to cover him and his Ashahawa. The sacrifice of animals unto Yahweh had to be partaken of by those who offered the sacrifice. Barashit 7 And Yahweh said unto Nu, Come you and all your house into the ark, for you have I seen righteous before me in this generation. Of every clean beast you shall take to you by sevens, the male and his female, and of the beasts that are not clean by two, the male and his female. Barashit 8 And Nu went forth and his sons and his wife and his sons' wives with him. And every beast, every creeping thing, and every fowl, and whatsoever creepeth upon the earth, after their kinds, went forth out of the ark. Barashi 8 And Nu builded an altar unto Yahweh, and took of every clean beast, and of every clean fowl, and offered burnt offerings on the altar. Thus the reason why Yahweh wanted him to bring seven of each clean animal onto the ark, so that there would be enough to replenish its kind upon Haaretz. Barashi ate, and Yahweh smelled a sweet savor. And Yahweh said in his heart, I will not again curse the ground anymore for man's sake, for the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. Neither will I again smite any more every living thing as I have done. Therefore, even before the law of Masha, clean equaled food. Unclean was abomination and not food. Since pork is heavily consumed in Amaruka, I will focus on him for a moment. Nowhere, I repeat, nowhere is pork considered food in the word of Yahweh. However, there is a forever ban on the consumption of pork. Uyakra 11 And the swine, though he divide the hoof and be cloven footed, yet he cheweth not the cud, he is unclean to you. Of their flesh you shall not eat, and their carcass shall you not touch. They are unclean unto you. This is the law of the beasts, and of the fowl, and of every living creature that moves in the waters, and of every creature that creeps upon Haaretz, to make a difference between the unclean and the clean, and between the beast that may be eaten, and the beast that may not be eaten. See also Barashit 6, 19 through 22, Barashit 7 and 2, Yashayahu 66, 17, Yahuhanan, 21 and 9, Lucas 24, 42 through 43, Ma'ashim 10, 10 through 14 and 28, First Kapa 1, 15 through 16. This is part one of the foundation of Yahuwah's truth. Torah Rabbah for watching. Like and subscribe to Watchmen and Yahuwah for more videos. And as always, Ahaba Ushalam from Watchmen Yeshai.